Hi there, welcome to Crossfader. My name is Jamie Hartley and in this DJ tutorial we're going to be focusing on hot cues, Crossfader and the effects all within your piece of DJ equipment. Now in this tutorial we're using the Pioneer DDJ1000 with Record Box, but the same techniques can apply to nearly any DJ setup that has these features. So, what are hot cues? Well, hot cues are something that DJs use to become more creative with music, to be able to jump to different sections in music. But in this tutorial, we're going to focus on how to use them in a more finger drumming style. So this isn't literally creating your own drum beat. It's more about taking pieces of vocals or taking melodies and chopping them up and playing around with them so that you can become creative with that piece of music over the top of another track. We start nice and simple, just learning about the rhythm in music, and then we'll build upon that throughout the tutorial, combining different features and techniques that you can then piece together to create a way more creative pattern, a way more creative DJ set, and hopefully you can take the lessons taught in this tutorial and apply them to your own sets, whether it's live or just in your bedroom. This is a really fun tutorial to help you get stuck in and using the hot cues. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe and do all that good stuff and hit that bell icon to keep getting videos like this from Crossfader. The first thing we need to understand before playing around with the actual hot cues is the timing in music. Now this is a more advanced DJ tutorial so I'm hoping at this point you understand what the different beats in the music are. So we can count along in fours, for example, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Now that repetitive beat is the beat that you tap your foot along to. It's the one that you beat match and get in time with the opposite track when you're mixing. And that's the constant rhythm throughout the song. However, there is an offbeat timing as well, which lands every half beat. So if we were to count along and add in some ands, so we'd go one and two and three and four, which fills in the gaps. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four and 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 and. Those ands land in between the actual beats. So if we look on the waveform, this position here is halfway between this beat and this beat. Now you usually find things like hi hats or um, higher frequency sounds in this half beat pattern. However, all we want to do is really focus in on those half beats. Reason being is we've got the whole beat and the half beat and we can bounce back and forth between the two when it comes to creating rhythm. Hot cue play is all about creating patterns and rhythm. So understanding these two different timings, the straight timing on the beat and the half beat timing which lands in between, we can use those two different timings to create a pattern and a rhythm. Now you'll notice on the left hand side I've got a track loaded. This is Epitone of Hype, Ladies with an Attitude Underground Mix. And the reason why I've chosen this is there's pretty much an a cappella at the start, which is really nice. Ladies with an attitude, fellas that were in the mood. And I've set a hot cue on the Ladies with an Attitude, which is the first bar. Ladies with an attitude. And on fellas, fellas that were in the mood. And they both land on the number one B. Ladies with an attitude, fellas that were in the mood. And that's all I'm going to use out of this song to play over the top of this instrumental loop that I've got saved on Fats and Small Turnaround. We've got without the strong punchy drums at the start and then the next loop. We've got the drums in and we're going to lay this vocal over the top of this loop. Once you've got your hot cues set on the point you want, Hot cues sound really good when you're playing around with them on vocals that are isolated by themselves. So acapellas or pieces of songs that have the vocals just exposed. It also sounds good on melodic notes in a song, which we're going to look at soon. Um, they don't sound very good on parts of the music where there is a lot going on, where there are different frequencies all jumbled together. You want things that are quite exposed and isolated within that particular song. Or if you're using an acapella, you can pick out certain words that will sound good. Now let's practice the timing, just the straight one, two, three, four timing over the top of this loop. So let's set off this nice strong beat here. And then all we're going to do is tap the ladies every beat. One, two, three, four. And then we could move across to the blue pad, which is the fellas. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Ladies, 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 
And all we're doing there is tapping along to the beat of the music, but obviously that can sound very repetitive and get quite annoying. So we're going to now go back and forth between letting the piece of vocal play and then tapping it four times across a bar and then letting it play again. So we tap one, two, three, four, and then press it a fifth time, which is back on the number one. Let it play for the whole um, vocal part. Ladies with an attitude. And then tap it four times again and then let it play. So this is what this would sound like. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one. One, two, three, four, and one. One, two, three, four, one. Leave it to play. And then I'm going to jump to the next one. And the next beat. So that then sounds way more realistic. It sounds more interesting than just pressing like crazy over the top of the beat. So we're using the hot cue play of just playing along to the beat of the music, but then actually letting the vocal play over the top of the beat as well. And by going back and forth every four beats and alternating between pressing the hot cues and leaving the vocal to play, it starts to sound a bit more interesting and you can start to take control of the timing and the rhythm of the music. Now this is the very basic timing when it comes to hot cue play. But as mentioned before, we've got the off beats as well, the ands that land in between the strong beats. So we could start doubling up how fast we press the hot cue. We could go one and two and three and four, or you could even count in eights. This is the double time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's totally up to you which you prefer, but let's just count along and do that in time. Let's leave the beat playing. So single time would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, double time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or you could think of it as one and two and three and four and 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 four. But as before, it sounds really repetitive and really annoying to just do that over and over again. But you need to be able to get your finger to be able to press that fast and to keep in time. So a little exercise that you can practice is doing four to the beat and then eight to the next four beats. So that would sound something like this. One, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. And by doing that, you can start taking control, um, your brain starting to work out what the single time and the double time is, and then also be able to play in that rhythm. Beyond that, you could then introduce leaving the vocal to play so it doesn't sound too repetitive again, and going back and forth between tapping it four times and tapping it eight times. So you could cre create a pattern something like this. One, two, three, four, let it play. One and two and three and four and one, let it play. Then the next one. And you're starting to create and combine the different timings together to create something, again, way more unique and way more interesting. It doesn't have to be as repetitive as that. And that's where you can start to break down and do it back and forth between the single timing and the double time. So you could create patterns out of this. You could do one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, over the top of the beat. Let's do it with the fellas. And by doing that, you can then create different types of rhythms and different types of patterns. All we're doing is changing the length 
of each of those um, bars or each of the beats that we're applying the re repetition to. So for example, we might just press it for two beats at single time and two beats at double time. We might press it at three beats for single time and one beat at double time. Something else that's really good to get familiar with is being able to lead the a cappella or the vocal in. So by pressing it half a beat before the next bar and then on the bar. So if you were counting along, you'd want to press it on the four and one. So you go one, two, three, four, and 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 one. And that little double time tap gets your timing and leads the, the vocal in nicely on beat. So let's play this loop. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And one and one and then the fellas. And by doing that, it just sounds a bit more interesting than just setting a loop and letting that vocal go over and over. One of the only problems with hot cue play is it can start to sound very repetitive and when there is a lot of tapping of the hot cues, it can sound a bit too much. So silences are just as important as sounds when it comes to rhythm and creating patterns. There are two ways to do this. You can either cue the track up to stop it from playing or what most DJs would do is use the crossfader or upfader to silence that channel. So I've got the crossfader assigned left and right, and if we play this now, you can't hear it because it's on B. Bring it into the center, ladies with the and you can hear it. So what we want to do now is let ladies with an attitude play, cut the crossfader off, let it be silent for four beats, and then come back on at the same ladies time the as pressing the hot cue. So with our crossfader fingers, we can use either our thumb and index finger, to add it in and take it out. Make sure you don't come all the way over to this side. We want to just come into the center. Now, if you're cutting with the crossfader, you'll maybe want to check just one setting within your Rekordbox or Serato or your DJ software. In Rekordbox, if we click the gear icon, go to controller and go to mixer, we want to make sure the crossfader curve is set to this position here, which means it's a sharp curve. Your software might have something similar to this, it might be on the front side of your controller, it might be in the software, but what that means is as soon as it leaves the edge of the crossfader, Dude, it's at full volume. Don't just stand. If you find that the track fades as you bring the crossfader across, then this is the setting you're going to want to change. This is the same when it comes to scratching as well. Okay, so the first thing to practice is to open the crossfader, so bring it into the middle and press the hot cue at the same time. Ladies with an attitude. And then cut it off. So I use my thumb to push across and then bring it back into the center. Ladies with an attitude. And then cut it off again. Ladies with an attitude. You could apply a bit of pressure to the crossfader and then tap it. open the pose. There's nothing to it. at the same time. Ladies with an attitude. And always have a bit of pressure with your thumb. Ladies with an attitude. But it's up to you. Whatever feels most natural and comfortable. If you find the other way around works best to start with, then do it whichever way you feel comfortable. Next, we're going to set off the beat. And then on the beat, we're going to bring the crossfade to the center and hit the hot cue. So if you're using Serato, for example, you might not have the setting um, where you can just press the hot cue and it starts playing the song. So in that case, press play, let the track play but with the crossfader off. Then hit to the center and hit the hot cue. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. And then cut it back off. And then let's go back in. And cut it back off. And then you can cut it off, we could go to... And we're just breaking the vocal up. So that's really simple. However, if we want to introduce the hot cue play back in, we could do 
far to the beat, let the vocal play, and then cut it off. So let's listen to what that sounds like. Into the center, I'm going to hit it four times. One, two, three, four. Cut it off, and then the same. Cut it off. And by introducing some of those techniques that we've just covered and the crossfader, you can start to break up that vocal and make it sound really interesting. Now, I just want to add one more technique into these different combinations. So we've got hot cue play, we've got crossfader cutting, but because we're creating silence within the pattern, it's quite nice to fill that gap with an effect. So I'm gonna set up the echo here. I've got it on three quarters. You could have it on half a beat, three quarters, or one beat will all sound pretty good. And then all I want to do is turn the effect on, cut the crossfader off. I've got it on channel one. So now when I come into the middle and cut it off, the echo takes care of the silence and it just fills that gap and it sounds quite interesting. I'm going to turn the level down ever so slightly. There we go, that's quite nice. So let's listen to what that sounds like. One, two, three, four, and one. And then we'll do fellas. So that's what it sounds like with the echo. You could have a reverb, which also sounds quite nice. Let's listen to that. It just adds a bit of space to it. We could go a bit bigger. And I just put the reverb to 50% there. Going back to the echo, we could turn the echo off and then just apply it to the end of the word. So, Ladies with an attitude. and all I'm doing there is turning it on and cutting the crossfader off. So, to do this, let's break it down without the beat first. We'll count along one, hit it on number one and count along one, two, three, four. Now it's nice to turn this on on number three um, and cut it off on number four. So we go one, Ladies two, three, four. Okay, cue it back up, turn it off, back to the center. Let's do it again. Remember, number one, number three, number four. One, two, three, four. Turn it back off. One, two, three, four. Turn it back off. One, two, three, four. Now, over the beat, we could go... Start here. One, two, three, four. And that just adds the echo to the back end, the last words in that little phrase. Why am I doing that? Well, what I want to introduce next is the hot cue play. So the repetition with the hot cue. And I don't want the echo to be applied as I'm going. It doesn't sound great. So I want that to be dry without any effect. And then cut it off. Okay, let's do all this all together now. By combining these three different techniques that we've covered in this tutorial, hot cue play, the rhythm and timing with hot cues, the crossfader cuts, and applying the effects, it starts to make something that is just dry and by itself. So this Ladies by itself sounds that great. You could use that over the top of this beat, but by taking control of it, you can start to become way more creative, use your equipment to its full potential, and just have way more fun. So this is just an advanced DJ tutorial combining different techniques to really be creative with your equipment and your music.
Now this can work with vocals and it can work with melodies as well. So let's have a quick look on a different track and a different genre, how we can apply these techniques to something that isn't a vocal, but it's just some notes. So what I've got here is East Side by Benny Blanco and Thinner Edge by DK. So this is a drum and bass track. Let's put the BPMs the same for now. Let's go to 88 thereabouts. And just before I get started, I know that the keys aren't correct between these two tracks. So I'm actually going to use the key sync and pitch east side right up because it sounds quite nice. When I was young, me here. So I've got loads of hot cues set up here, but it's these four that I'm interested in. So these are isolated notes within the song. So what I could do is just jam along as if I'm playing the piano almost over the beat of this song. If I apply an echo as well, I've just got to be careful with this hot cue here because there's another note that follows straight after. So I've just got to, if I don't want this note to play, I need to either cut it off with the crossfader or cue it up with the cue if I'm using record box. But I'll use the crossfader and you can start to see how all of this combined can start to get really interesting. Let's play it from... In. So I'm just being creative with the rhythm and the timing, leaving the effect on and just cutting the different notes in and out. You notice I changed the pattern, so rather than just go along um, one, two, three, four, I used from here to here to then here and here. So you can change the, um, the order of it as well, which can start to sound interesting. So we could go... And you can start to create your own melodies and your own rhythms within the music. So this is where it starts to get really interesting and really creative. You could then just jump to the other hot cue in the track and let the track play and then carry on mixing. And that's how you would sort of get out of the hot cue play and continue throughout your set. But it's a really nice way to introduce and tease the crowd with the next song that you're about to play or introduce certain phrases uh, of vocals that they maybe know to tease the crowd and just get the energy level up a bit. Make sure to practice all of the separate elements individually. So if you are struggling to get the double time, master that first before moving on and trying to cut in and out with the crossfader. It all works in a systematic order. So really get used to the timing and the hot cues first, then applying the crossfader, then applying the effects and combining it all together. Remember, keep it simple to start with. Practice your rhythm and timing and just get the hot cue play down first before combining any of the techniques. But I hope you've learned something in this video. I hope you can take these techniques and, and apply them in your own DJ sets and in your live DJ sets in front of a crowd eventually. These are really cool techniques to help you become more creative. And if you want to learn more tricks like this, then check out our online DJ courses. There's a link to a free lesson from one of them just to get some more tips and tricks that you can apply in your sets. And if you like that lesson, then check out some of the complete courses that we have available. If you found this tutorial quite hard, it is a bit more of an advanced DJ tutorial. And if you're just getting started, then maybe check out our beginner courses to get started and help you master those foundation skills. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in another video very soon.